welcome to a humble highland home thank you for joining me here today we like to support our local businesses wherever we can especially our local food producers and farmers this is part of our local community economy and our food security we like to know that our fresh produce hasn't been transported thousands of miles just to be packaged only to return to be sold in large supermarkets with little reward for the farmer. Our local dairy has got an honesty shed and vending machine and supports other local food producers by selling their produce here. This is incredibly fresh, non-homogenised milk, which we collect in traditional glass bottles, which are then washed out and reused many times over. And of course, because this is full fat milk, there are certain things that we can make from it too. I can remember learning how to make small amounts of butter from the cream off the milk when I was a child. That's when we used to have it delivered to the door. I would just start off by pouring the milk into a wide top container and pop it in the fridge overnight to allow the cream to float to the top. This is the way I was shown, this is the way I've shown my daughter and my grandchildren too. There are many butter churning devices that can help with this process, but nothing is quite as simple as a jar with a well-fitting lid. I find that when I make something from scratch like this, you have a great appreciation of what actually goes into making that produce. And making butter really highlights the amount of cream that is needed to make a pure block of butter. So once you've scraped off as much of the cream as possible, you just put the lid on the jar and start shaking it. We do need to be quite vigorous with it, so it really is a good upper body workout. Just be careful, it doesn't slip. Eventually, the consistency will start to turn as the fat separates from the buttermilk. I strain off the buttermilk and I'll just place this to one side as I can use this in a minute. I rinse the last of the buttermilk off the butter and try to get as much of the liquid off the butter as possible. This will make sure the butter keeps as fresh as it can and increase the shelf life of it. However, today this homemade butter is gonna to be perfect 
spread on my traditional Scottish bannocks. Bannocks are a mixture between a scone, a thick pancake or a flat bread. There are many different recipes, some using flour and some using oats, and they are generally cooked on a griddle. However, the mixture is perfect to take along on a camping trip to be cooked on an open fire. The word bannock derives from the Gaelic word which means morsel and is linked to the Latin name panis, which means bread and originated from Scotland. I have adapted my recipe to work for me over time. However, it is based on very cost effective ingredients of flour, baking powder, fat, salt and milk. I will write the recipe that I am using in the description down below. I mix all of the dry ingredients together before rubbing in the butter and then I use the leftover buttermilk and some additional milk to mix to a thick batter. We had lit the fire on this chilly evening so it made sense to serve on electricity and to cook the bannocks on top of the stove. I heat the pan just enough so that I can hear the batter sizzle when I place it in the pan. I don't want the pan too hot because it will cook on one side but it won't cook all the way through and it's quite temperamental trying to cook on a stove fire so I will just pull it to one side so that it makes sure it's cooked all the way through. Once I've flipped it over I just leave it to cook now for around about 10 to 15 minutes until it's golden brown both sides. I find bannocks are very filling. A little really does go a long way. They're perfect to accompany a hearty soup or to have by themselves with some butter and some homemade apple and rhubarb jam. I hope you enjoyed today's video. Please leave any comments below or chat with me over on Instagram. Take care of yourselves and others and I'll see you in the next video.